Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. I'm really excited to be in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2018, and I'm joined by Lee from SolarWinds. Thanks for joining. Hey, Matt. Good to be here. So tell us about SolarWinds. Uh, SolarWinds provides monitoring and management software for technology professionals. Not quite as many as uh, maybe AWS uh, does in terms of services and products, but uh, going on 59 and counting, so. Uh, 59's a lot, yeah, AWS has a ton of services which makes monitoring complex sometimes, right? Oh, absolutely. So last year at reInvent 2017, both of us remember that EKS, the Elastic Container Services for Kubernetes, was announced, and the whole Kubernetes community and, and myself, everyone was really excited about this announcement. Um, fast forward one year to reInvent 2018, where we are now, and we're seeing huge adoption of Kubernetes and EKS, and I think you're seeing the same with your customers, right? Yeah, we really are. Um, uh, much maybe faster than we had anticipated, so we're getting some great feedback. Uh, we're making some good announcements uh, at this reInvent about that feedback. So a lot of our viewers are using Kubernetes and using EKS, and, and really they're wondering how to monitor their clusters. Their clusters. I get these questions all the time. So for you, a, a monitoring specialist, a monitoring company like SolarWinds, what has changed from the say, traditional server monitoring two years ago to EKS today? Let me unpack that. There's, there's a, a little bit there. Uh, maybe about uh, three things pop to mind. Um, one of those is about the protocols that are used, uh, whether it's the infrastructure themselves, um, and some of the infrastructure that AWS offers is a great example of this, or, or your applications, that the it's uh, more often than not becomes about HTTP. Um, it's not that SNMP isn't ubiquitous and, and um, available everywhere. It's not that uh, WMI doesn't expose all kinds of interesting information about your Windows-based um, applications, but uh, more and more that's become sort of the lingua franca, if you will. Yeah. Um, another one is uh, the notion that your infrastructure is no longer static, and so um, the ephemeral nature of workloads uh, that EKS, in, in this case, um, manage and schedule, um, you know, kill and, and restart as and when, has really changed the way in which uh, tools like ours need to approach uh, how it is that uh, we keep track of where workloads are. Yeah, okay. So that's the second one. The third one is, is uh, you know, the, the notion that, that uh, th there's a bit of an ecosystem happening within just uh, Kubernetes itself, and as a Kubernetes operator, uh, being on that, that command line, uh, using uh, kubectl. You mean kubectl? Uh, oh, <laughs> anyway. no, we, we like to control our infrastructure, not, uh, not, not hug it. <laughs> Is um, that those operators don't necessarily like to jump out of that command line. They like to stay um, uh, within that same experience, and so uh, meeting them where they're at in terms of um, Kubernetes operators and Kubernetes controllers, we've uh, gotten some feedback there and have done some work to make um, the integration a bit more Kubernetes native, if I can yeah. say that. Makes a lot of sense. No, that's helpful. So, you know, one thing that you just said is that the ecosystem that sort of evolved around Kubernetes, and I see you have a few of those things on the board, tools like Prometheus and, you know, log tools like FluentD, uh, in addition to AWS native tools like CloudWatch, there's a lot of choices for customers now to, to monitor and, and do log aggregation for their Kubernetes clusters. So what do you have up on the board? Let's dig into this. Are these yeah. representing, like, nodes in a Kubernetes cluster? Uh, they are. Uh, so uh, we've got a three node cluster here. Yeah. Um, each of these is representing something of a daemon set. Okay. Um, and so to exactly your point, um, it really the, the, what we're trying to highlight is how it is that um, the customers, our customers, your customers are, are gathering telemetry. Yeah. Um, in the case of FluentD, it's, it's all about logs. In the case of um, Prometheus, it's all about metrics. Yeah. And uh, for AppOptics, it's um, currently, and uh, we'll see if this doesn't change in t over time, um, but is uh, not only metrics, but also uh, traces, so distributed traces. And if I'm following you, like this is sort of a representative architecture. Customers aren't necessarily using all of these. They might be using, for example, Prometheus and CloudWatch logs, or, or FluentD for logs and CloudWatch. Is, is that right, sort of a combination? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it really is. Um, it's one of those very frustrating, it depends type uh, answers, <laughs> yeah. where whether you're running some of this um, on-prem, or just maybe you were running um, Kubernetes and EC2 before the exciting announcement last year about EKS. Um, and, and so we're trying to meet uh, our customers where they're at, um, trying to give, provide them some choice uh, recognizing that over time uh, they, they build up um, skill sets and run books um, 
and knowledge around um, different different tools. Um, and so, uh, not only do we just try to provide them choice, but but also try to um, dog food much of this internally as we run. You're using your own EKS clusters, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So you said you mentioned these are daemon sets that they're running as on instance agents effectively. Um, but I know from talking to you beforehand that that's not the only way things can run. Like you have a number of plugins, right? Sort of application specific plugins, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, so how does that work yeah. in a Kubernetes cluster? Let me see if I can uh, get this large enough and legible enough. Um, yeah, it, uh, it, it's exactly that. There's, there's a few different choices here. So if we have, if you had a, a MySQL uh, deployment, for example, and maybe that's running in a, in a container, that one of the ways that, that um, we support application-specific collections yeah. um, is to run a, a sidecar agent. And when uh, you say sidecar, does that mean an, an agent actually running on the container? Uh, it does. Okay. Uh, so one container here, one container here, and uh, this agent being um, running the, the, the plugin or, um, or just the collections for this specific application, while maybe you're running a daemon set down here um, that's collecting metrics about the node itself. Got it. And, and maybe even more to your point, to the extent that Maybe, uh, maybe in front of this MySQL is a PHP application. Yeah. Maybe it's running in a container, and and um, uh, well, there are a number of different architectures. So don't. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, but but uh, you know, oftentimes we we find that um, you know so, uh, something like N Nginx is uh, used. Yeah. And um, to the extent that you might deploy another one of our. Agents, our APM instrumentation, yeah. um, that you would then um, begin to get immediate visibility out of requests that come into your application, um, and begin to see distributed traces uh, of those requests. So, okay, well that, that's interesting because I think for viewers, what, what, what I find interesting is sort of the different, almost nesting of agents. You have, like you said, the daemon sets, and you have sort of on-container um, agents also doing additional monitoring. This idea of having sort of different levels of uh, Container level, instance level monitoring is is new and, and interesting in the in the container space. So you have all of these different tools, and w whether it's distributed tracing or metrics or log aggregation or the CloudWatch APIs and CloudWatch logs, um, it, it all has to go somewhere. Is, is that what's up here? I, I see you have App Optics, Logly, Paper Trail. What's happening? Is this collecting all the metrics? Yeah, that's right. Um, we've got uh, any number of arrows, if you can imagine, that um, end up coming into. Um, coming into these offerings. And so App Optics um, today is all about metrics and traces. Yeah. Um, Logly and Paper Trail are all about logs, um, differentiated in um, the specific use cases that they're addressing. So these are sort of centralized dashboards, whether it's for your logs, if you're a customer already using Paper Trail or, or App Optics collecting all the different metrics, is that right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, and whether that's um, uh, within EKS or other AWS services. So CloudWatch has been um, a significant help to us in that regard. Um, just as uh, an AWS aggregation point for many of the metrics and, and CloudWatch logs. Great. Well, I really like this because it's sort of giving our viewers an idea of the different tools that are available to them in terms of log aggregation or sort of metrics collection specific to Kubernetes or popular with the Kubernetes community. It's nice how it works alongside native solutions like CloudWatch and CloudWatch logs. And you know, having the flexibility to use different tools even on the front end for sort of searching or analyzing your logs or visualizing everything in the app optics, it really gives customers a lot of flexibility and hopefully teaches our viewers a little bit about the world of monitoring specific to Kubernetes. So thanks for sharing it with us. Oh, very good, yeah. And thanks for watching. This is My Architecture.